we're back to answer more of your Chia cryptocurrency questions. Jeff, we're gonna jump right back into it. We ran out of time last time, but uh, you've got more questions for me. Let's do it. Somebody says, I'm trying to do my first plots, but I don't understand what all the settings mean. I've tried doing just 10 plots and it said I don't have enough space on my drive, but it's two terabytes. And this goes back to the storage space that we were talking about okay. earlier. Uh, the, the NVMe space for the, uh, yeah. the temporary. So folder. they're saying it's two terabytes. And I read somewhere that Chia plots are only about 100 gigs each. So I'm lost. Why is it that I can't do 10? Ah, uh, interesting. Okay. I'm going to bring up my screen here. Okay. What this user is encountering is they're adding a plot and they see it's 101 gigabytes they're seeing it as, uh, but that's actually gigabytes, which is hard for me to say, but it is a word. Um, and they're setting this to 10. So thinking that, okay, 101 times 10 is going to be about a terabyte and they have a two terabyte NVMe, so it should work if they plot that in parallel, right? Uh, well, uh, now note that this is gib gigabytes, not gigabytes. Okay, and the temporary space required per plot is 239 gigabytes. So a uh, quick way to figure this out, I'm gonna go into Google and say 239 gigabytes to gigabytes. That is going to be 256 gigabytes per plot. And we're doing 10 plots at once. So that requires 2,566.24 gigabytes. Uh, convert that to terabytes, and that requires a 2.6 terabyte drive. So you're actually exceeding the capacity of your NVMe right there. So when you're, when you're setting up your plots, um, you need to keep that in mind. Now, we actually have a very helpful calculator for you. If you go onto our website, category5.tv, this is going to help you out, viewer. Uh, on our website, click on Free Tools up at the top, and then we're going to scroll down to Cryptocurrency and click on Robbie's Chia Plot Calculator. And in the calculator, we're gonna say, okay, now you mentioned you've got a two terabyte NVMe drive. Um, and let's say my farm capacity is eight terabytes and we've got eight threads on our i9 CPU and we've got uh, 64 gigs of RAM, okay? Uh, I can see that I can do two plots and selecting parallel and I can use 3.7 uh, well, 3,788, I don't know how to say that, mebibytes. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you say, well, two is not enough. Robbie, I want to do more than two. So notice that this is set, the mode is set to performance, which is going to give us fewer plots per run, but it's going to be faster. Well, if I want to maximize my output, I can go with the most number of plots per run and the slowest, and that's going to give me seven on your two terabyte. Okay, so follow those settings and you'll be able to actually maximize how much you're able to do, but you notice that 10, it, it's nowhere near 10. It's seven is the absolute maximum that you're able to do. Right, okay. Now, as far as the performance versus maximum capacity, is there a sweet spot in that? Like, It's hard to calculate yourself, right? Uh, because you're, you're gonna be doing a lot of testing. So uh, under use of computer in our calculator, you can change it to balanced so that you can still use your computer system, for example, which basically re relieved it of one plot so that's going to give us a couple of, well, one thread on our CPU and a couple of gigs of RAM. Uh, or I can go with low resource usage, which is going to allow me to run it in the background and I can keep working on my computer. It's only going to plot three plots at a time, but it's going to be able to find that sweet spot for right. us. Okay. So that's just a helpful tool. This is not the de facto tool that's going to answer all your questions and get you plotting perfectly. It's just a helpful tool to get you started and it should be able to help to, to get your head around some of those settings. Sure, absolutely. Because those settings do matter. You don't just randomly punch in a number. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if anybody who's done mining go, I'm just gonna put in a random number. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes to mining cryptocurrency, there's been a lot of talk about some of the, some of the coins and the environmental impact. Oh, now, yes. Chia says that they are environmentally friendly. They do say this, Jeff. But there are some on YouTube that's saying that that's hogwash and it's actually just as bad environmentally as some of the more well-known cryptocurrencies. Right. So is that true? Is it environmentally friendly? Because my thought is if you can do it on a single board computer, that's so if much less can. on energy pull. I think the statement, Jeff, um, that I have heard about um, some people saying that it's just as bad as proof of work or it is proof of work. 
they are looking at the plotting process. So we, again, backing up to our first question, understanding the difference between plotting and farming. So the plotting process, well, when you're watching these videos or learning these things, reading tutorials and things, understand that if the person that you're observing is setting up petabytes of storage and they are creating a plotter that has 200 NVMe drives and they're all set up in a raid, like they are, that is, they're, more than a farm, like they are like a factory farm, okay? <laughs> yeah. So understand that. Now what we're doing is completely different because understand that the proof of work aspect of Chia is just the plotting process, if you want to call it proof of work. It's not technically, but it is, you know, that's the time component and it does use CPU and, and uh, IO and RAM, not GPU. So if they say it's not environmentally friendly, they are referring, and when we say environmentally friendly, we're talking about like energy consumption, heat generated, all that kind of stuff. It's not like it, it doesn't spew things into the atmosphere right. or all that. But just like crypto, you know, the proof of work cryptos like Bitcoin. Um, that's, they're referring to the plotting process. In, in our scale, so we're, we're, we've got a hard drive connected to a Raspberry Pi that we're going to farm on. We are plotting until that hard drive is full on our farm. Once that hard drive has as many plots as it can take, and our calculator will tell you, so your, your eight terabyte drive can take 75 plots, okay? So once I've created 75 plots on that drive, I stop plotting, I'm done. Now, for as long as that Raspberry Pi and the hard drive will live without failing, they will just run and run and run farming Chia. How much usage is there in that process. Now, what do we have, Jeff? We have a Raspberry Pi microcomputer and we have uh, an external hard drive. Right. That is this, the usage, which is negligible. Yep. It's just that initial plotting process. So thinking about traditional mining, you're gonna be mining, mining, mining all the time, 24 seven for the end of, until the end of time. Uh, this is a process that happens once, you move those onto your farm, and then the farm is extremely economical. It's not going to be running up your hydro bill, your electricity bill. We call it hydro here in Canada. Um, and, and it's extremely, uh, by contrast to proof of work, extremely good comparatively for the environment. Right. So, I mean, if you're doing a, 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 an analysis in a, you know, say 24 hour period between ASIC mining versus, <laughs> versus plotting, <laughs> you might say, oh, there's, it's not that negligible. But if you look at the grand scheme of, you know, you, you do your plotting and say your hard drives run for three years yeah, and you balance that all out, it's like, it's not even close. Keep in mind, a consumer hard drive is going to have a five year warranty on it and it's meant to run for five years consecutively. Exactly. So, you know, you're, you could get five years out of that and beyond. That's right. So it's just going to run using nothing. Which is amazing. Mm -hmm. So, okay, now somebody has... We must be getting through the list. We are. We're getting, wow. we're, we're getting right near the end. Thank so you so much for your questions, folks. Post your comments below. Give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to this channel as well. We'd greatly appreciate that. Hey, we hit 30,000 subscribers. Let's <laughs> see if we can hit 100,000. Love it. Yeah. All right, yeah, we've got a couple... I think easy questions. Oh, good. Oof. Because now we've gone through the setup process. Right. We're mined. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're getting ready Farmed. to start mining, farming. Sorry. Yep. Um, what wallet should they use? Because oh, okay. she is like, I don't have yeah, a Chia. Yeah, you're not putting it on your traditional wallet. Um, it, it's part of the Chia blockchain software right okay. now. Now, will it be adopted by, um, by other wallet software? Probably. Uh, yeah, I would expect so. Uh, keep in mind that Chia is open source and you know, that's, that's likely going to happen, but right now it's very, very new. So there's not third party integration. I, I don't know of any, um, any uh, exchanges that are currently carrying it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the wallet is going to be the Chia blockchain software. Right, okay. Um, and as far as you know, the investment cost, because you've talked about MVMEs and, yep. you know, you're going to burn one of those out in the hard drive space. One at least. Yeah. <laughs> Is there kind of a sweet spot between investment versus potential profit? There's, there's a big fine line between investing and just simply farming Chia. Um, I would suggest 
I mean, if you're just the average Joe consumer like me, just grab some stuff that you got kicking around. I, you might have to buy an NVMe drive. I happen to have a two terabyte NVMe drive that I can burn through and that's okay. Uh, if you don't, you might have to buy that but uh, and a little bit of extra hardware just use what you have um, Jeff you were asking about like how big of a hard drive should I have and, I, and it, it, I think if, if you've got a four terabyte hard drive kicking around which most of us do at this point maybe you can pull it from something um, you'd probably be okay to start with that right. you could start with a one terabyte and you're gonna plot it and let it run on your farm and then upgrade it or add another one. And you can continually kind of grow it that way, but don't go sinking a bunch of money into something that hasn't generated anything for you yet. Okay. Build yourself. And there's a, there's a flip side to that because early adopters, you know, the early bird gets the worm and that's absolutely true with something like Chia because the more people who start farming it, the harder it will be to get Chia. And so, you know, the early adopters are the ones who are going to get, the Chia coin really, really quickly. Um, so there's a flip side to it too. If you can pull up some extra storage and you know hook it up, then that's great. But um, but I, uh, there's a fine line between setting up a farm and gambling. And I would say as soon as you cross over that line or even approach that line, uh, back up. Okay. The, just use what you have, and and that's the sweet spot to get started. And if you have to put a little bit of hardware into it, then by all means do. Um, but just keep it within reason and, and watch out. You know, don't look at that calculator and say, wow, I'm going to get $600 a month on my Raspberry Pi. Well, then you've got to factor in that you're going to actually need to buy four NVMe drives because you're going to burn through them in order to create that many plots. Right. So, you, you, you know, you've got to be careful of that. So um, start small work your way there and then you can start to increase that as you grow. Okay. Makes sense. Um, now if I decided, you know, I've been mining Chia for three years, farming, Chia. Far farming, sorry, I've got to get used to this farming. Yes. Say I've been farming Chia for a couple of years now and, and I've, but it's only been out for a week. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I decide that yeah, okay. I'm done. And, and oh, I, and I want to. You're I just, finished. I, I'm finished. Maybe, maybe wanna... it's gotten so complex that you can no longer get chia. Right. Yeah. So, can I um, repurpose those hard drives for something else? Sure. Can I use them for a different cryptocurrency, or is the whole thing like once it's plotted, that's it? You're done. The only thing you're burning through is the NVMe. Okay. So you probably won't want to reuse that NVMe drive. You'll want to use that for plotting until it dies. Um, as far as your farming hardware goes, yeah, absolutely. Repurpose that hard drive. Um, use it as an external backup drive for your computer, whatever you want to do. Uh, use it as extra storage. Uh, put it in a RAID array. Yeah, absolutely cool. reuse it. It's just a hard drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, those are all kind of the top questions, and I think Fantastic. it kind of covers the gamut from getting started to, well... Shutting her down. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, we're going to be looking at Chia uh, over the course of the next little while as it grows. And uh, we are going to be doing some features such as uh, farming on a Raspberry Pi microcomputer. Um, so you don't want to miss out on those features. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe so that you get those notifications. Click the bell, blah, blah, blah. You've heard it said. Um, you know how it works. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. And thank you so much for your questions. Do post yours below if we haven't covered what you're wondering about with Chia. And we'd be happy to field those for you. Take care, everybody. See ya. Bye.